that's what I think of the Power 5 yesterday. Went 0-3. Hopefully the two look-aheads I gave you for college football on Saturday do better. Now a 145, 121, and 10 overall run on the show. Still in the black, but need to do better today. For Thursday, we've got two Major League Baseball playoff games, two college football games, and the NFL to break down. I think we are going to do better today, guys. Of course, you can always go ahead and let me know what you think of my selections down in the comments section below. If you want to make fun of me for yesterday, that's okay. I'm a big man. I can take it. Uh, if you agree with my selections today, do not be afraid to smash that like button. I always appreciate your support. So here we go. Let's get right into it. A lot to talk about. It starts with Game 3 of the ALCS at 5.08 Eastern. Pretty much a must win for my Guardians down 0-2 in this series. I like the Yankees team total under 3.5. That's minus 105 at DraftKings. Why? Well, because the Yankees are facing a lefty starter here in Matthew Boyd. As my good friend Mark Zinno always says, the Yankees can't hit lefties. To that point, they definitely are in their worst split. The Yankees are a team that ranks number one in WRC Plus against righties, but just number 10 against lefties. So that's a good starting point. Also, can the Guardians stop gifting the Yankees runs? In game one, there were two runs allowed via wild pitches. And let's not forget, Brian Rocchio couldn't catch a pop-up in the first inning of game two, leading to another run. Also, could we please stop walking Yankee hitters? In six postseason games so far, the Yanks have gotten 37 free passes between Boyd, who's a lefty, and the Guardians' MLB best bullpen, now back at home, I think they can hold the Yankees under four runs in this game. Doesn't mean the guards will win, but I do like the Yankees under their team total of three and a half. Number two, how about the NLCS for you? The Mets were certainly a dud last night. That was embarrassing. Not like they didn't have their chances, though. Incredibly, Dodgers starter Walker Bueller, who everyone, myself included, wanted to fade in one form or another, rightly so, last night. He became the first pitcher in postseason history. MLB's been around for a long time, guys. Get this. First in postseason history to throw at least 90 pitches in four innings or less and give up zero runs. How does that happen? That is now four shutout wins in the last five games for Dodger Blue. But the Mets have lost on consecutive days just twice since August 14th. That is uh, two months, a little over two months now. I talked about that in my analysis for the 4% Game 2 winner we had with the Mets. Plus, uh, plus 127 on the money line on Monday. I like the starting pitching matchup tonight from the Mets' perspective here. Uh, Jose Quintana, he has been lights out going back to the last few weeks of the regular season. Last eight starts, Quintana has allowed just five runs total. And two were unearned. And that's in 47 and a third innings pitched. Good for a .57 ERA. Yes, you heard that correctly. Meanwhile, the Dodgers may be 5-0 in Yamamoto's last five starts, but the right-handers ERA during that stretch, 4.95. I was very tempted to go just first five with the Mets here, but instead, I'll back them full game at the plus price. Again, they don't lose back-to-back -back games very often. Now to college football. Let's get a little creative with Boston College Va Tech. Uh, this matchup on ESPN at 7.30 Eastern. It's our third play today on the Power Five. I definitely like Vatek to win at home tonight. It was a disappointing start to the season for the Hokies, but losses to Vandy, Rutgers, and Miami, Florida, all by seven points or less, not a huge deal to me. Meanwhile, the bloom kind of coming off the rose for Bill O'Brien a bit, and BC, whose win over Florida State has not aged all that well, and the Eagles could easily be on a four-game win, a losing streak right now. Pardon me. Their last two wins over Michigan State and Western Kentucky, not exactly world beaters, we're by a total of five points. So let's do a money line parlay. Virginia Tech with Cincinnati on Saturday. Cincinnati is going to be at home playing an Arizona State team starting a backup quarterback. Doing that means we obviously just need Vatek and Cincy to win straight up. And it's plus 105 odds for that. So there you go. Vatek and Cincy money line parlay as we get a little creative here on the Power 5 for Thursday. Stay tuned for a little bit more creativity with the NFL game as well. Uh, the other game, uh, the other college game on Thursday is Georgia State at Marshall. Boy, did my clients and I steal one from Marshall last Saturday night in Statesboro. Wow, Georgia Southern, not to be confused with Georgia State, looked absolutely dead in the water for me, trailing 23-3 in the fourth quarter. 
The Eagles come all the way back to win 24-23, including a safety. Now, we were fortunate to have Georgia Southern plus one and a half. I said to, uh, told my clients in the analysis, play a money line if the line flipped, which it did. Eagles closed minus one. So based on closing numbers, Marshall still doesn't have an ATS loss on its resume this season. 5-0-1 oh, against the number. My power ratings actually say they're a bit undervalued tonight, but I don't want to lay it after a crushing loss like the one they just took to Georgia Southern. So let's look at the total for tonight instead. Under 51.5 is how I'd play this one. Georgia State's offense, okay, Georgia State, the opponent tonight, very bad offensively, uh, real bad. Not sure who's going to be starting a quarterback for them. It seems like forever and a day ago, the Panthers upset Vandy at home. Their other four games this season, they failed the top 24 points. Three games with 21 or less against FBS foes, only 14 against Old Dominion. Meanwhile, Marshall may also be playing a little switcher a quarterback with Braxton instead of Earl. Braxton's more of a runner, which means probably the Marshall offense is eating up more clock. Regardless, under 51 and a half for me on Georgia State Marshall. All right, in the NFL, it's an ugly one. Broncos, Saints, lots of injuries on both sides for this one. The Sean Payton Revenge Bowl. I think you got to tease the Saints in this spot. Asking Bo Nix, the Denver rookie quarterback, to win by more than one possession on the road, that seems foolish, at least to me. Remember, two weeks ago, I had people questioning me laying two and a half at home with the Broncos as a 5% play against the Raiders. They won, by the way. Obviously, Teasing through the key numbers of 3-7 and seven in a game like this with a low total, that is long approved, if I may create a phrase. And for the second leg of the teaser, obviously we got to find something to tease with the Saints. Let's go with the Seahawks on Sunday at Atlanta. Again, going through the key numbers of 3-7 and seven there. So a Saints-Seahawks teaser is what I've got for you here. And that is... Uh, the fifth play of the Power Five. Let us recap everything that we broke down today. Number one, Yankees team total under three and a half in game three of the ALCS. Number two, Mets money line. They're about plus 120 against the Dodgers in NLCS game four. Number three, a money line parlay. We're going to take Virginia Tech along with Cincinnati. Both just need to win straight up. That's plus 105 for that to happen. Number four, traditional play here, under 51 and a half on Georgia State Marshall. And number five, let's tease the Saints with the Seahawks on Sunday. Six-point teaser there, obviously. Go ahead and let me know what you think of those selections down below if you already haven't. Don't be shy about dropping your best bets for Thursday as well. I always enjoy reading those. Of course, for all of my best bets, you go to wt.buzz slash bp. As you know, I do have the number one football record this season at Wager Talk, a combined 33-16 and 16 record in NFL and college. That is 68% winners plus 48.2 units of profit and includes a 9-0 run in college football. 7-0 the last two weeks. My first college football winner, is available right now as we look to make it 10 in a row. Many of you got down with the $5 promotion on that. Still time to get it. Uh, again, wt.buzz slash BP. I'm going to be posting the rest of, of my card here within the next 24 hours. You'll be able to get that complete college card for $29. But again, a three-day all-access, seven-day all-access is your best value. Don't make sure, uh, or don't, uh, please make sure, I should say, don't forget to make sure you are subscribed to the Wage Talk YouTube channel. That's embarrassing. Uh, you click that bell for instant alerts. That way, you're notified when all of your favorite shows, including this one in the Morning Wager with me and Mark Zinno, drop. So make sure you're subscribed, just to be clear there. All right, that does it for Thursday's edition of the Power Five. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and smash that like button. Until next time, guys, let's cash some tickets.